What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today we're going to go over all the news from the past few days starting with the good bits from last night's this week at Bungo. But before we get into that guys, let me tell you about a giveaway every month I am doing and that is for a fully customizable controller. So every month I give away this controller to one of you lucky people to be with a chance of winning it. Simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details on this giveaway at the end of the video. Okay, so let's start and we are getting a stream on the year two combat system. Woohoo, Bungie State. Ever since we started talking about the second year of Destiny 2, we've dropped a lot of hints about how the state of combat between Guardians will be changing. We know you have questions about how you'll be using your weapons next season, how you will equip them, how you will customize them, how you will earn the ammunition you'll need to use them, and so forth. Joining us in one of the hot seats will be the full-time senior sandbox designer and part-time rockstar, John I can't say that second name, I apologize. He makes some promises that we'll keep when we go live on stream. The stream will be Tuesday, August 7th, 10 a.m. PDT on either Bungie's Twitch channel or YouTube channel. Both of them will be found linked within the video description. Quoting John right here. Hello friends. If you are a sharp-eyed PvP enthusiast, you may have noticed from some Forsaken coverage that the weapons are doing a bit more damage than they normally do in the current version of Destiny 2. If you are a seasoned Destiny 2 player, you may then extrapolate the possibility of a global lethality pass on weapons and abilities that may or may not be in the pipe to go live when the Forsaken is released. I'm here to quickly confirm that, along with weapon slots and ammo availability, we have globally adjusted the time to kill in the Crucible. If you'd like more details, join us on stream and we'll get into it. See you then. So the time to kill has been globally adjusted in Crucible. I cannot wait to see more about these people. We all want a faster time to kill. Hopefully that's what we are getting along with a lot more balance as well. Again, quoting Bungie right here. And that's just one question we'll answer beyond the shadow of a doubt. Tune in for a full demonstration of perks, mods, loadouts and everything else you'll need to know to best your fellow players in battle. We can't give you skill, but we can equip you with a pre-mission briefing. More about the new mod system later in the video people, but I do look forward to all these changes coming, I really do. Also guys, Crucible Labs is coming back with a new mode called Lockdown, which is basically a first two three round zone control game mode. If you guys don't remember zone control from D1, how it works is kind of like control, but you don't earn score from kills. You win by holding two points. Each team starts with a zero percentage score. Holding two zones will allow you to gain an additional 1% per second. First to 100 wins that round. There is no timer either, first two three round wins, wins the game, simple as that people. There are a few other minor additions uh, within this game mode that if you do want to check out, read through this on screen now. Crucible Labs in my opinion is a great addition to the game and I like the fact they are bringing old classics back and experimenting with them. For me, I'm waiting for one game mode in PvP and that is Rift. I would love to see this return with a few changes, absolutely epic. Okay, so moving on, and the whisper of the worm, details on the event and when it's coming back. But good news people, it's a weekend thing, much like Zer, every weekend it will return. The event will start the exact same way, during the Taken Blight event within the Lost Oasis area on IO, a Taken HVT will spawn in, kill him to open the portal to this whisper mission. Bungie said the following regarding the event and the issues people were having. Many guardians have heard whispers on the IO and rushed to investigate. Some of you encountered a long streak of cabal drills, far too many cabal drills. We did some investigating to see if this was a bug, turns out there was no bug, but the current random generator doesn't do a good job of preventing streaks of either event. We're currently investigating ways to prevent these bad luck runs in the future. We did some simulations to see if there might be any long streaks of one type of event in the forecast. We expect a few more outliers, but balanced with long streaks of only Taken Blight events. This activity will be available every week and once you do unlock the heroic version it will stay unlocked. We will continue to monitor the situation. Happy hunting people! So that's that guys. I like the idea of the heroic staying open if you have completed the normal version, that's cool. The event will come at the exact time Zer does if you are wondering. This week will also be a chance for you to gain more progress on the exotic ship, the 1000 Wings. 
Burn this week I'm guessing will be void, but to say for sure is impossible at this stage. But to be honest, by the time you get around to watching this video, the event will be live anyway. So, ho, oh, let's move on. The latest D2 roadmap has been dropped, which you guys can see on screen now. Notice the changes coming on August 28th, a few changes here which were not expected until September 4th. So I guess we will get to experience a few core changes before the DLC release, that's absolutely epic. The 2.0.0.1 update is the big one people, the one that drops with the Forsaken DLC, major game changes here. Ones we have waited for for a long time, random weapon rolls, power matters in trials and banner, in game lore, mod system updates and much more people, I honestly can't wait. There is a part of me thinking this is their last chance in getting it right, hopefully they do. Bungie in the trap state the following about chasing that also beautiful powerful gear to help progress to that top level. We've been pretty true to the plans we laid out in the last roadmap, but there were some new entries. As we do, we'd like to provide some commentary on director updates and milestones and challenge updates. Two of the main functions of the director have been to help players know what to do next and lead them to sources of more powerful gear. We have some new ideas for how we can better support these goals, so we're changing the way those things work. There will be three ways to acquire powerful engrams in Forsaken, a whole new challenge system that will replace the way you've been tracking milestones. Specific quests and bounties will provide better gear, indicated by their summaries. New mysteries are rare resources, but if we told you about them, they wouldn't be mysteries. Wicked. Most of these sources of power will be refreshed weekly or daily, some will be one-time sources. Once these changes are deployed into the world, the Milestone Blade will call attention to these activities. Critical required missions such as the main campaign or new subclass path pursuits, next steps for quests or other aspects of the progression of your characters, legacy milestones from D2's campaign that aren't becoming challenges or quests. Additionally, the layout of the director will be updated to accommodate two new destinations, the Tangled Shore and the Dreaming City. You'll obviously need to purchase Forsaken to visit them, but they're up here on the interface that we all see. This update sounds pretty helpful, I do indeed look forward to experiencing it guys. Ok so back to that new mod system, Game Informer recently released exclusive details on this new mod system, quoting Game Informer right here. Another aspect of Destiny 2 that's been reworked are mods, before they offered a way for each weapon and piece of armour to differentiate itself, and legendary mods offered a small boost in power, making them the only way to reach the power cap. As players sunk their teeth into the game, however, they found most mods weren't all that different and often felt more like a requirement than a fun tool. With Forsaken, mods will hopefully be useful enough that you'll want to equip them. Not have to. For one, mods will no longer offer a power boost, which means you won't have a pressing need to equip a mod just to slightly increase your power. This means a couple of things. First, at Forsaken's launch, only legendary mods will be available. No more combining rare mods. Second, it means a bit of house cleaning. With your current mods becoming obsolete, you'll have to make a quick run to the gunsmith, who will take your old mods and trade them for components to make new ones. This does come with a slight downside, because all mods are now designed to be more expressive, energy and heavy mods will no longer act as a way to change the element of a given weapon. These new mods will be less about cooldown reductions and more about changes you'll notice right away. A few mods Cotton was able to reveal, to us were Icarus Grip which improves your weapon's accuracy while airborne, that sounds incredible, Radar Tuner which decreases the time it takes for your radar to return after you've been aiming your weapon, and Target Adjuster which grants your weapon better target acquisition. According to Cotton, bonuses like these will make mods more impactful overall. As a counterweight, mods will also be hard to acquire, but when you get one you like, it should feel like you're making a weapon your own, ideally they aren't something that you are swapping in and out regularly Cotton says, they're more something you use to put the finishing touches on your favourite weapons and armour. These changes also apply to raid weapons which will use the same mod system, but also have access to unique raid mods. And while raid mods for the new raid that will follow Forsaken's launch will be tailored to that specific raid, there's nothing stopping us from sneaking in some more universal raid mods in the future Cotton says. While new content is always great to see, it's the fundamental underpinnings of a game like Destiny 2 that can mean the difference between checking in with it every once in a while and having it regular rotation. With these sweeping changes to both milestones and mods, Cotton and the rest of the team at Bungie hope to move Destiny 2 further into the latter by always giving players something new to do and making their choice of weapon and mod matter more than ever. And that's that people and this is what I like to hear, mods will actually act as an extra perk, that sounds super cool. 
So we can apply mods to certain weapons, no doubt, but these mods, I understand, can be removed from one weapon applied to another. Sounds amazing. They will be rarer to get, but will be more impactful on you, your armors, and your weapons. Sounds good. Many, many great additions to the game, people. Many, many great changes. Destiny 2 will finally be that game we expected upon launch a year ago. Okay, so we're going to move on. And yesterday, they dropped a new trailer showcasing some amazing new exotics. Check it out. Forsaken. Available September 4th. Pre-order and get the Ace of Spades last hand ornament plus Cade's exotic stash. I actually did a video covering all what we saw in this video yesterday. Just some outstanding exotics to come. The one I will talk about again though before we come to the end of the video is that Warlock chess piece, the Traumatic Fire. This thing is going to be unbelievable. It basically adds Firefly to any kinetic weapon in the game. Yesterday I spoke about weapons such as the Crimson. As we know, the Crimson headshots regen your health, refill your mag, and now with this chess piece, cause targets to explode. Damn, oh damn. But imagine this exotic with a new weapon system, kinetic shotguns, snipers. Imagine, people. My warlock is on the way to the top, that is for sure. But guys, on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you'd like to check out the video I did covering all the exotics from that trailer, you'll find that linked within the video description, along with the TWAB and Game Informers article on the new mod system. But on that note, guys, I'm almost out. But before we end, every single month, people, I'm giving away a fully customizable controller for either Xbox or PlayStation sent anywhere in the world. To be with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then follow the Gleam link linked at the top of the video description. Fast, simple, and legit, people. But on that note, I am out, guys. Thanks, as always, for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you on that next one.